DigiKey and Adafruit present on MPI. This week, Alexis. That's right, Alexis, which comes out with they have some great Hall effect sensors and magnetometers and magnetic sensors. And this week, we're going to be featuring a fresh new sensor from Alexis, the MLX. 9395, which is uh, comes in a couple of different packages. We'll be highlighting the SOIC because it's the easiest one to solder, but it comes in a couple different packages. And um, this is uh, the 395 is an upgrade to the 393, which you might be like, hey, that sounds familiar. That's right, we have a breakout for it. And that's why when I saw the 395, I was like, I bet it's just like too better than the 393, which it is. So the uh, 9393 is a magnetometer that we stock. It's um, a very nice um, magnetometer. It has a very wide range and it can do I squared C or SPI. And these magnetometers are not used for Earth's magnetic field sensing. So there's basically like, well, there's like three kinds of magnetometers. There's the low range magnetometers that you'll see that are used in IMUs. And what those do is they detect, like you see here, the Earth's field, and that can tell you which way is north, right? It's like a compass, basically a compass sensor. Uh, in fact, you know, the, the micro bit we were showing off earlier has a compass sensor on it. Um, this sensor, however, is meant for magnets, like literally like the magnets that you have like on your fridge and stuff. Um, those magnets are many, many more times powerful than a compass, which is why you shouldn't have a magnet near a compass if you're trying to find north because the magnet will like mess you up. Just like the plot of like 10 horror movies, right? Yeah. Like the compass, they like, think they're going in circles. Keeps anyway, happening over and over. Keeps happening. So um, this magnetometer is designed for detecting magnets. And it's not like a Hall effect sensor, which Malexis also makes, which detects like one axis of magnet. This does 3D magnet detection. And you're like, why would I do that? I'm glad you asked. Because detecting magnets in 3D is a great way to do um, orientation and uh, lever and motion detection. So for example, um, let's say you have a potentiometer. Now, I have, uh, folks here know potentiometer is a very common electronic component. And the way that works is you have a, you know, a, a round uh, you know, 270 degree curve of uh, resistive material and you have a wiper and you have the contacts on either side and then you basically like physically drag this contact, the wiper, across this uh, resistive material to create different resistances. Which is great except that anyone who has an old stereo knows that you know after a couple decades the, um, the volume knob gets worn out. Like the mechanical rubbing of the wiper on the resistive material eventually like destroys it. And a lot of people, I mean, sometimes you'll go to stereo repair, you'll repair it. But for a lot of people, if you have some equipment that's uh, dealing with a lot of vibrations or a lot of motion, um, you don't want folks to come in and say it doesn't work anymore when really it's because it's like a, you know, a 10 cent, 20 cent potentiometer. So instead, what you could use is a magnetic potentiometer. So you see here on the right, they have a it's potentiometer knob, but it has a magnet on the end of that yellow black circle. And as they twist it, um, the X and Y axis of the magnetometer, the chip underneath it, detects that rotation, um, and then you can do, f first off, you get full 360 degree rotation. So you kind of get the best of both rotary encoder and potentiometer in which you can do absolute um, orientation detection because you know exactly what degree it's at, and like, it's not like a rotary encoder which only does ticks. But unlike a potentiometer, you don't have that dead zone, right? That 30% that you can't use. Um, of course, you could put a physical stop in if you wanted to, but you don't have to. And there's no contact, so there's like, you don't have to worry about dirt, you don't have to worry about liquids, you don't have to worry about humidity. It's like, you, you can have something physically in between the two because magnets are magic. It's like spooky action at a distance, except not really. They create a field, and the field is detected by the sensor on the chip. So that's like one uh, kind of um, sensing. You can also do linear uh, or slide motion sensing. So within a couple inches away from... Uh, the sensor, you can have something moving back and forth or in and out, and you can um, detect uh, the location of, you know, this is actually used a lot for interlocks, usually these Hall effect sensors for this, but you can also do like more precision um, linear or slide motion where you can kind of detect where on like the slide it is. It's kind of like a slide pot basically, right? Except again, there's no contact. You don't have to worry about um, the sensor wearing out. You don't have to worry about um, you know, scratchiness, you don't have to worry about dust getting in. Um, so that's a, another use of these kinds of sensors. Like once you start thinking about like, well, magnets in 3D space, you can get a little creative. Another um, 
thing that's this is kind of what we actually see this used for the most is a 3d joystick motion so you can either have the joystick on a gimbal or the sensor on a gimbal and then as you move the sensor around in 3d space there's a little bit more math involved but you can detect where that joystick is anywhere and this is used uh quite commonly because you know uh, folks who i think even like um uh, some high-end uh, gaming joysticks use magnetic because, again, you don't have to worry about that scratchiness or wear or drift of a potentiometer because you've got like this magnet. Um, the magnet's pretty much good forever, and the sensor um, it can do automatic offset detection if necessary, but it's also like pretty stable. Um, so, you know, 3D joystick is a little bit tougher, but it's also a common use case. Uh, for these sensors, uh, you can use SPI or I squared C. Uh, so it's really flexible. You can basically use it with any mic controller. Um, we, you know, wrote some code in Arduino for it. And I squared C, I think I did that on Saturday or Sunday. You saw me do it, and I was done by the end of the day. It was no. pretty easy. Um, there's things like oversampling, and there's trigger and interrupt and um, filtering and some gain. What I really like is that, um, you know, this chip can do up to 120 millitesla, which is like some insane number of gas. I think it's like, it's like, 12,000 gauss or something. It's just a, it's very, very powerful. It can, can detect um, very strong fields and, and handle them with 16-bit resolution on the ADC. Uh, and you just need uh, I2C or SPI to read that data out. Very easy to use. And it is available on DigiKey's site. You can check it out with the short URL, which I have, digikey.com forward slash short URL, C-N-J-J-R-V, or you can look at it for the part number, or you can just type in Lexus. MLX 9395. I will watch out right below Phil. See that number over there? Uh, that number tells you um, the range. So if it says 0, 0, 1, or 0, 0, 0, that's the 50 millitesla range, which is actually still extremely good. If you get the 1, 0, 1, or 1, 0, 0 range, that is 120 millitesla. So there's different ranges um, there's also a built-in temperature sensor, by the way, I forgot to mention that. Uh, but there's different ranges, so depending on, you know, measure your magnet, and then you can pick and choose between the two. And if you're using the 393, uh, the QFN version, at least, is pin compatible. It's not code compatible, the code's a little bit different because, of course, the range is a little different. But, uh, you know, you can solder down. Uh, I use one PCB. I, I, as I'll show here, I, I used an MLX. 393 PCB, put the 395 on, and it worked like a charm. So you want to go check out this demo? Yeah, we have a demo, and then at the end we'll play a video. Check out this. Okay, Everybody. so this is the uh, MLX 9395. It says 393 because, again, I, I got a PCB that was for the 393 because we stock it in the store, and I just started 395 on it. And I got this large magnet. This is a uh, large rare earth magnet. Um, and you can see as I uh, as I get close, it doesn't uh, it doesn't saturate. It can handle um, quite a powerful magnetic field. Like two of these together can kind of really pinch your finger. So these are fairly strong. So you can see the field, and you can see how um, you know as I twist it, you can see how the x and y axis change. And you would use that to detect uh, rotation. You can see how the numbers move as I move it in an X or Y direction. Another really cool thing is you can, um, unlike potentiometer, you can measure Z. So you can see the Z axis yeah, cool. going in and out. So um, great. You know, I think there's a lot of projects that would actually benefit from um, magnetic sensing. It's like if you have something that's only, you know, a couple inches away and you want to detect motion or orientation or, or have... Um, you know, you want to detect something, but it's not physically connected. There's not a lot of options, but magnets, magnets can be a very good trick. Yeah. You, know, you put a magnet in something, and then you can detect when it's placed and how it's placed. There's and some musical instrument stuff that hasn't been done yet. Yeah, with magnets. Do. And people people have magnets, and they're very common. Yeah. So All that's right. this week's NPI. We also have a video yeah. from Alexis. Let's play the video. It's nice and short.
And that is this week's Eye on NPI. That's right. Eye on NPI.